Greetings, code adventurers. Ready to master Python lists, user input, and epic function spells, all woven seamlessly into Red Deep? No way! In this video, we'll show you how to create an unforgettable single line party greeting, customize hero stats, and even gather user choices. Ah! Uh, stick around, because by the end, you'll have all the tools to add dynamic, personalized interactions to your own fantasy visual novel. Don't miss a second. Your quest for coding glory starts now. Adventurers, let's begin with our first incantation, creating a list of names. It's like assembling everyone at the same table, all set for the next big quest. One variable, multiple heroes. Perfect for keeping track of who's on the front line, or who's snoring in the back. Huh. You mean I get to see who's skipping out on watch duty? A quick roll call. I love seeing everyone's name appear. Like appear. a stage lineup. Indeed. Our list. A glorious testament to our might. Or at least our attendance. Who's taking the first step, Meow? Index. Zero. The frontliner of this operation. Keep an eye on them for the toughest battles. Could have sworn I was leading. But hey, I'll let the code decide. Happened is the magical chant inviting a newcomer to join our quest, like swinging open the tavern door. I hope this bard has some catchy tunes. Our battles need a soundtrack. That's all I can do. Behold the power of negative indexing. We can see who's at the far end without counting from the start. Genius, no? Well, we're just lazy and don't want to do the math. Still neat trick. And there we have it. A robust team, ready for the next adventure. No confusion. Everyone's accounted for. Exactly. A single print statement, and we know who's on deck. Feel free to add yourself to the party if you dare. Just type your name, or remain a silent observer. The more, the merrier. Let's keep this party lively. With input, we extend our hand beyond this party, allowing any hero out there to inscribe their name into the tale. If they answer, their name won't just be words. It will become legend. And of course, they officially join the ranks. Join my crew. By invoking dot Appent, we inscribe their name upon the party scroll, binding them to our noble quest. Oh, I love when a new member joins. It's like an encore at a concert. Just when you think the performance is over, someone steps in to keep the magic alive. But if the silence lingers, it means no champion has stepped forward this day. Some warriors prefer to remain unseen, waiting for their destined moment. <gasps> their time shall come, perhaps in another chapter. Simple, right? Master these basics and you'll stand tall in any code skirmish. Fine, fine. As long as I can find my potions when the dragon shows up. Then, dear viewers, onward we go. Our lists are formed. Time to press deeper into our coding adventure. Fascinating story. Adventurers, we conquered lists. Now we face the next quest. Functions, our new spells. Each function helps us tackle repeat tasks more easily. Spells, huh? So I define them once, then cast them as needed. Sounds efficient, and less grunt work for me. Exactly. Let's begin with the simplest quest, printing a greeting to rally the party. Our function shall be called Greet Party. Ready? Let's use a universal incantation to greet everyone. Instead of repeating the same spell, we'll weave a function to summon it anytime. By naming our spell with Deaf Greet Party, we create a custom incantation we can summon again and again. Wow! And inside? Just one line. Print hello, brave adventurers, our rallying cry. It shows the message loud and clear every time we cast it. A single call to Greet Party conjures our greeting. Perfect to open every quest on a positive note. Indeed, this is the simplest function. No parameters, no return, just a line of code that repeats on command. 
A hero's mana must stay strong. Rather than chant the same boost over and over, let's define add mana to handle it, with a bonus. Two numbers go in, your base mana and the bonus, and poof, we mix them into one glowing result. Let's stir some sparkle into the spell. Then Trent does the rest. It tells the hero in plain words how much mana they now hold. Efficient and elegant. Now, if I need to replenish or boost mana in multiple places, I just cast add mana. Clean and simple. Disgusting. 10 base plus 5 bonus equals 15 total. Saves me from rewriting code every time I level up. I like it. A hero's blade must grow stronger. Let's define enchant blade to boost it with a magical bonus. One spell. Endless upgrades. Just like that. Base power plus bonus. And bam. The blade stats go up. No scrolls, no fuss. Instead of shouting the result, we quietly return it, so the code can store it, pass it, or upgrade it again later. Clean magic. Here, Enchant Blade 12 yields 15, because the bonus defaults to 3. If you want a bigger enchantment, do Enchant Blade 12, 10, and get 22. Pure power. Power! Returning a value is like handing the newly forged sword to the hero. They can store it in a variable or pass it to another function. Hmm, time to shine. Show hero stats greets the hero and shows their power, all in one clean cast. I love how it feels like a full entrance scene. Greeting first, then bam, stats revealed. It's smart design. This way each action happens in order. Greet, enchant, and present. First, we greet the party with Greet Party. A classic entrance before any grand reveal. Next up, Blade Boost. Enchant Blade powers up the hero's weapon, ready for glory. And finally, we announce it loud. The hero's name and their new blade power, printed for all to see. See? We chain spells. Greeting plus enchant. 20 plus 3 equals 23. One function call for a full hero report. No scattered code. Exactly. This synergy keeps everything modular. Need to show different heroes? Just pass new parameters. No duplication, minimal fuss. Great job, everyone. We can now greet, add mana, enchant blades, or show hero stats with just a few lines, like weaving spells. Makes my battle simpler. I'm all for that. Indeed. Onward, dear adventurers. Our code is brimming with function incantations, ready for grander quests. Keep practicing these spells. Next time, we might combine them with user input or advanced logic. The horizon awaits. Adventurers, we've spelled out functions, but our quest isn't complete if we can't ask the user or hero questions. Imagine we want to gather a name or request a choice. We can't just guess. Input is key. So, instead of hard coding everything, we let the users supply their own data. Hero name, weapon choice, or next move. Sounds more dynamic. Precisely. Let's begin with a simple scenario, asking for the hero's name and greeting them personally. Let's do this. Just two lines. Input lets the hero speak, and print welcomes them to the party. Instant bond formed. Now, the code doesn't have to guess the hero's name. We request it from the console in real time. Yes. So if I type Lyra, the program prints Welcome Lyra. A straightforward user conversation. Sometimes the adventurer must choose their spell. 
A simple menu lets us ask, then act on their choice. And there's power in choice. A menu is like laying out your potions, pick the one you need, right when you need it. It also keeps our code flexible. Want to add more spells later? Just add another print and condition. Let's cast some fun. First we show the list of spells with three prick calls. Just like putting scrolls on a table. Exactly. The moment the user taps their choice, our code conjures the corresponding incantation. No second guessing needed. Magic. It's a bit like flipping through a magical grimoire. Just pick the page number and poof. Instant spell. Then input waits for the hero to choose a number. That's their spell of choice. Special spell selection! Go! And return sends that choice back, so we can act on it right after. A perfect incantation to let the user pick from multiple paths. Like a hero selecting which enchantment to do first. Exactly. After getting their choice, we can decide which function to call. Let's see that in action. Now that the hero has chosen, we must respond. With if, we guide the code down the right path. First, spell choice equal choose spell. Stores the hero's pick, like jotting down which spell they whispered. That's efficient. No more shuffling through a hundred scrolls. We see the choice right away and prepare the right move. That's right. Then we compare. If, elif. It's like asking, did you say spell one? No? Maybe spell two? Oh, are we feeling magical today? You chose spell two. Let's pour in some mana. Behind the scenes, our function admona is preparing its ingredients. Two numbers, base and bonus. We pass in ten and five. That's the same as giving a flask and a gem to the alchemist. Boom, fifteen mana. Spell three selected. Oh, this one's flashy. Time to shine up that blade with a boost. Now we call enchant underscore blade 12. Our magical forge function. It adds power quietly, but the result? Loud. The new blade power gets stored in sword underscore power. Then bam, we announce it with print, like it's a battle score. Bam, bam! Oh, flashy and functional. It's like announcing a power level live on stage. Behind the scenes, this print ensures the user sees the result of their decision. It completes the spell's effect visually. And each choice triggers a spell we crafted earlier, one for each path. If none match, well, the spell fizzles. This little block ensures different outcomes based on the user's input. If they press one, they greet. If two, we add mana, and so forth. So we can rope in our existing function spells, like we're chain casting them after a user choice. Nice synergy. Ah, when we ask for numbers with input, we get strings. To compute magic with them, we must first transform them into true numbers with int. Dear, we store the hero's typed words in base power as TRAR, but it's still just text, like a scroll waiting to be deciphered. It's like seeing magical glyphs on parchment. Until we decode them, they have no real power. Time to transmute the scroll's truth into usable power. Now we invoke int, the incantation that transforms string into number. At last, we can calculate real power. Stand proud. And with base underscore power converted to an integer, we can work genuine magic on it, like turning raw or into a finished blade. We feed that number into enchant blade with a bonus of 10. The result? A stronger blade stored and upgraded. Talk about a quick power-up. One quick conversion, and suddenly we're slicing through enemies twice as fast. It's the advantage of harnessing real numeric values. No illusions here, just solid calculations fueling real magic. Indeed, with the input properly converted, we can deliver consistent enhancements every time. No guesswork involved. Now if the user types 15, we convert that 15 to an actual number 15, and pass it to Enchant Blade. Magical math ensues. Okay. Beware errors if the user types something non-numeric. 
But for now, this is enough to see how to parse integers from input. There we have it. User interactions. We can greet the hero by name, present them with a menu, or parse numeric inputs to shape their destiny. Indeed. Our codes are no longer locked to predefined data. Adventurers can feed it custom values or choices at runtime. Think of the possibilities. Dialogue, choices, combat decisions, or even forging new items. Onward, dear party. Thank you so much for watching this video, my dear code adventurers. I truly hope you enjoyed it, and that it helped you on your magical coding journey. Thank you for your trust, your patience, and sorry again for the delay. The source code is available for free on my itch.io page, links in the description. And if you'd like to support me, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's totally free and really helps me a lot to keep creating more epic tutorials for you. Thank you so much if you do. Love you and have a blessed day, my dear code adventurers. See you soon. Bye.